community colleges. Recent political debates and policy and legislation have shined a light back on our community colleges. But what are these community colleges? Where are they in our state and in our country? And what role do they play in the greater picture of higher education? Elizabeth Bolden, the president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Commission for Community Colleges, joins us to discuss those questions and more. That's all coming up right here, right now. I'm Sam Chen, and this is Face the Issues. Good evening and welcome to Face the Issues. I'm your host, Sam Chen. Recently in political debates with proposed legislation and so forth, a lot of attention has been brought back to our community colleges. These colleges, often called two-year colleges, are throughout Pennsylvania and other states all over our country. But what role do they play in higher education? What kind of investment are community colleges? And are they just for students? Or is there are there a gem that our communities are missing out on? Well, I'm pleased to introduce Elizabeth Bolden, the president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Commission for Community Colleges. Ms. Bolden, thank you so much for being here. Good to be here, Sam. Thank you. Uh, this is such a pleasure. Um, as, as we've been talking before the show, um, I serve as an adjunct professor mm -hmm. at the community college, which you did as well. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just a show that I've been looking forward to having. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, let's start at just the 30,000 foot overview level. Um, when we talk about community colleges, this is, there's, they're not new. This is something that we've had for generations. Um, but there's, like you said, there's an increased attention to them. So just give us the, the kind of lay of the land. How many community colleges do we have in Pennsylvania? What's the average enrollment? What, what role do these co colleges play? Sure. So we have 14 community colleges in Pennsylvania, although they operate more than 100 sites and campus locations throughout the Commonwealth. So even though it sounds like 14 are not enough to cover all right. 67 of Pennsylvania's counties, they really can. And they also expand their reach because they all offer online programming okay. as well. So if a Pennsylvania resident doesn't live in the geographic okay. proximity of a community college, they can take advantage of all of our online offerings. We do have about 150 programs that can be oh, wow. completed completely online. Wow. Um, and so the colleges, many of which are celebrating their 50th anniversary over the past five mm -hmm. years or so, um, really are the economic and economic development engines of not just their local community, but the Commonwealth. Overall, community college students in Pennsylvania uh, total 300,000 students, oh, wow. which makes them the single largest provider of post-secondary education in Pennsylvania, no matter how you count yeah. all of the other higher education institutions that we have. 300,000, that, that's an incredible number. And you mentioned, one of the things you mentioned was a lot of the 14 in Pennsylvania are in within these five years hitting that 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. Northampton Community College where I teach just, just did it, I think a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. um, was there a reason that they're all around 50? Was, was there something that launched the, the community college movement, if you will, in Pennsylvania? Sure, the Community College Act, which was mm -hmm. passed in the late 1960s, and then of course it took a while for all the colleges to be approved sure. to operate. That was really the, the instigation of the community college movement, both in Pennsylvania and across the country, mm -hmm. uh, when policymakers decided that there needed to be an alternative to mm -hmm. four-year institutions because people were not able to access post-secondary education. It was too unaffordable for the sure. majority of citizens. And so community colleges were really created to fill that niche uh, for folks that could not attend the traditional sure. four-year sector. In so many ways, they still does. I mean, I'm thinking the 60s, and they're saying colleges are unaffordable. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward 60 years to today, and it, it's so much more the case. And so in many ways, community colleges still fill that role. There are, there are obviously big differences between community colleges and, and traditional universities and, and institutions of higher learning. Um, one of them that we hear a lot is you hear community colleges references two-year colleges, and then your universities and other colleges references four-year. But other than, and the, the degrees will vary. Community colleges generally offer associate's degrees as opposed to bachelor's degrees. But other than those, there's also a vast difference when it comes to student body, instructors, and, and the, just the role that they each play. Could you delve into that a little bit and just kind of what sets community colleges apart in your mind? 
Sure, well community colleges are really diverse places of learning mm -hmm. where traditional four-year institutions generally serve the 18 to 24 year old mm -hmm. market. Uh, community colleges serve individuals from age 12 all the way up to our senior citizens. In Pennsylvania, our average age is actually 27, so our students okay. tend to be a little older. Uh, the majority of our students are women. Uh, most of our students are first generation college students, which means they're really starting their journey to transform their parents' mm -hmm. lives at a community college. Um, and at a community college, you have a lot of options for programming. You can, of course, get the typical two-year degree yep. that most people think about at a community mm -hmm. college. Um, but we also offer degree and certificate programs, and those are usually programs that are much shorter in length. They may be 12 to 18 months, commercial driver's license, welding, etc. And those programs allow students to come to community college and then immediately enter the workforce. Um, and then community colleges really pride themselves on their student focus. Um, I, I like to say that if you are not sure what to do in higher education, the community colleges have someone that can help you do yeah. that. Um, we have a very intensive advising structure. Um, so you don't have to know what you want to do mm -hmm. when you get to community college. Um, they're really a good place to come and, and begin your post-secondary study and see what might work best sure. for you. Sure, and I hear a lot of students say that, which is mm -hmm. I'm not sure what I want to do. And I got into, say, a Muhlenberg College, um, which is a great institution of higher learning, mm -hmm. but it also costs a lot. <laughs> and right. they say, well, what, if I don't know what I'm going to do, why am I going to, to go to a school where I just I may end up being there for five or six years because I keep switching my majors? Meanwhile, there's a community college where I can and have the opportunity to explore and faculty to push me and ask what my interests are, my passions are, and things like that. Right, and I think you brought up price, and that is one of the most significant differences. So mm -hmm. the average cost of tuition at Pennsylvania Community College is just about $4,100 a year wow. uh, for 30 credits. So it really does strive to be affordable. Wow. And most students, uh, when they come to community college, are taking some general education requirements. Mm -hmm. um, and those are all transferable to Pennsylvania public institutions mm -hmm. of higher education. So students can have confidence that the classes that they're taking at community right. college will transfer if they decide to pursue a four-year degree um, at any one of the institutions in Pennsylvania. Right. Uh, the other thing I found that was, you know, that was interesting was you talked about different programs. So not everyone's coming just necessarily for that associate's degree and that transfer. A lot of students are coming for a welding program or an aviation program or a nursing program where they can go right from the college, get a certificate or a degree depending on, on that program and go into the workforce. I'm not sure I the last time I heard of a four-year institution that has a welding program or mm -hmm. something like that. What role does that, how big of a, of a picture in our community colleges are vocational uh, degrees like that play? And how much, I mean, how much impact do we see from that into then the job force? Mm -hmm. Well, we are the largest provider of workforce training in the Commonwealth. And of the 300,000 students that I mentioned to mm -hmm. you early, earlier, almost half of them are in our workforce programs. Oh, wow. uh, we are really working very closely with our employers to ensure that we are helping them create the workforce mm -hmm. that they need. Uh, we regularly meet with our employers to understand what their job training needs are. Just this year, we added 71 new programs at wow. the community colleges that are aligned with workforce needs. Yeah. They're in programs like robotics and engineering and unmanned aerial drone technology, yeah. which no one had in 1970 yeah, when we agreed. started those community colleges. So it's really a place, again, it, it serves the traditional mm -hmm. education market, um, but for folks who have entered the workforce and decided they wanted to make a change, for folks that, whose employment has been disrupted for any number of reasons, can really find all kinds of opportunities at their community college that meet their family needs, their schedule, um, and their learning styles. It's a very unique niche that the community college fills in that sense, and it's always the sense that I got for, for it. Um, and I not realize that it was almost half of our students who are doing that sure. workforce development, which is incredible. Let me ask you this. I'm sure you're familiar with the Jack Kent Cook Foundation had a report that came out. Um, and they, they in the report, they showed that community college students who ultimately transfer to four-year schools and specifically prestigious four-year schools tend to do better than students who go right out of high school. And the numbers exactly, um, they were saying about 75 percent um, of the students that come from a, a community college um, will, will graduate. Uh, from that four-year school, um, as opposed to 61% that transfer in from another four-year institution versus 73% that come right from high school. So the highest number of success in these top schools here locally, Lafayette College mm -hmm. or Muhlenberg College, schools like that, the, the highest percentage of success comes from our community college 
transfers. Yet there's a whole group of schools out there that do not take transfer credits from community colleges, that do not want to take transfer students from community colleges. One, why do you think that stigma is there? Um, and then two, if given the opportunity to speak to an administrator at a school like that, what would you say to them? Well, I, I think that there may have been misperceptions in the past about mm -hmm. community college programming, but I think it's starting to erode for a lot of reasons, including the data that you just shared, which confirms the internal data that we have known for a long time, which community college students are very well prepared mm -hmm. for further post-secondary study. I think of Bucknell University in Lewisburg, yeah. Pennsylvania. Bucknell is certainly among the nation's top yes, universities. Uh, and they have for some time operated the Bucknell Community College Scholars Program, which is a program that provides scholarships for high-performing community college students to complete their bachelor's mm -hmm. degree at Bucknell University. And I think all higher education institutions who understand the importance of diversity and high-achieving students on their campus and having alumni that are performing at the top of their fields yeah are increasingly not just admitting community college students, but actively recruiting them. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that our graduates are working at the top of their fields in business, engineering, law, medicine, um, and we know that their impact will only be amplified as we increase the numbers of community college graduates. I, I can think of three. Uh, uh, Montgomery County Community College mm -hmm. uh, graduate Jan Kargugulitz went on to Columbia University, subsequently got his MBA and is working at Vanguard. Uh, Dr. Karen Morris Priester, who is a graduate of Hack Central Pennsylvania's mm -hmm. Community College, went to Yale Medical School. She's practicing as an anesthesiologist here in the area. Um, and Mr. Hazim Hardiman, who graduated from the Community College of Philadelphia, uh, went on to Temple and was named a Rhodes Scholar in 2017 oh, wow. to study at Oxford. So really, I think the data is clear, and yeah. as you pointed out, and I think higher education institutions are beginning to realize that uh, it's at their peril that they uh, do not accept the really remarkable students and well-prepared students that are coming from community colleges. Yeah. Last question before we cut the break. What would you say to a student who's sitting at home right now in high school, perhaps, making that debate between a four-year college and a community college, or a student who is maybe in the job um, that and they want to make a career change, but they need some education to do it, and they're thinking about community college, what do you say to them? Well, I would say it's really important to take time and get resources and understand what your choices are all about. But really, if you come to community college, if you come here, you mm -hmm. can really go anywhere. Yeah, I agree, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, we'll come right back and continue okay. this conversation. Don't go away, we'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Face the Issues. Uh, Ms. Bolden, thank you again for just your time and for being here. We were talking about community colleges and, and specifically the higher education and just the, the difference of programming that they offer from a traditional university, the difference in our student body, um, and just the opportunities that community colleges offer that a lot of other schools don't. I also wanted to turn to the community side of that term, community college. Community colleges are very much embedded in our communities, and, and that's the purpose, and that's why they're created, and they play a much larger role than simply classroom education. Um, you had mentioned earlier um, the idea of uh, the workforce development and how so much of what we do in community college is actually directed at supplying the workforce for the jobs that we need today. Um, I want to start with a more general question. The community college is open to the community in ways that a lot of people in our community don't quite understand. What are some of the different programs that are available? And if a community member wants to get engaged with their community college, how do they do that? Mm -hmm. Well, community colleges really do take the community part of their name very seriously. Mm -hmm. That is part of their mission. And so while they do do the traditional teaching and learning that many of us think about when we think about college, they really are integrated in their community culturally, socially, and mm -hmm. economically. And so you can find uh, community colleges offering opportunities for the very young in our communities from our daycares and child cares. Uh, to summer camps, theater camps, and all kinds of enrichment activities for elementary and secondary school students, including dual enrollment. Yep. Many of our high school students um, elect to take college classes while they're involved in high school. Um, and some people may not know that over 5,000 people aged 50 and over take a class at a community college every year. Wow. Uh, they can do so at reduced or no cost, mm -hmm. depending on the program uh, and where they live. Um, so really, any type of person who may just want to learn some Spanish before they go on to a trip abroad right. um, or want to increase their skills in cooking, they can find an opportunity at a community college to connect. And of course, that doesn't even talk about all of the cultural opportunities sure. from art exhibitions and dance workshops. 
Um, and so really all you need to do is uh, look online. Mm -hmm. uh, you can come to our website, which is www.pacommunitycolleges.org. We have a link to all the community colleges in Pennsylvania, or you can Google your own community college um, and really just pick up the phone and call. They'd be happy yeah. to direct you to the areas that you're most interested in. But there's also the economic impact, which mm -hmm. you alluded to, uh, which is we employ over 20,000 students individuals statewide. Yeah. Um, that creates a lot of um, upstream and downstream industries. We add to our local communities in that way and we also provide a public service and reduce the need on public services. For example, Northampton Community Colleges has a free dental clinic mm -hmm. um, that not only serves the community but allows the students in the dental hygiene program to get some real world experience before they get out into the job market. So really they are the community's college and they are very proud of that and that's what sets them apart somewhat from other yeah. institutions of higher education. Yeah, it's you mentioned the dental clinic. Um, the other thing I thought of was the Hampton Winds restaurant, sure. which is an excellent restaurant, fine dining Absolutely. restaurant in Northampton but is run by the culinary program mm -hmm. and the students there. And it's, it's a beautiful exchange of both fitting community needs, but also giving that hands-on real life experience to the students who are there. Um, one of the things I wanna ask you about, uh, continue with the, the theme of community and how these community colleges take that part of their name seriously. Um, the, one of the things that Pennsylvania community colleges have is called the Keys Program. And I find this incredibly important. Could you explain to us what the Keys Program is how, how, who, to whom is accessible, and how someone goes about doing the KEYS program and, and what it does. Sure, the KEYS program is something that the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania started, and we are one of the approved providers mm -hmm. of KEYS. And really, KEYS is about providing supports uh, to parents of, of children who are not working to really provide them the educational opportunities to change the trajectory of their lives. We know that when you're a single parent, you are juggling a lot of responsibilities, yeah. and it can sometimes be hard to think about how you can pursue an education. And so when students come to community college and they're eligible for the KEYS program, which allows them to fulfill federal work requirements by attending college, they are uh, eligible to access a whole host of support services, be it transportation, housing, food, daycare, childcare, transportation, tutoring, uh, that really allows them to access and complete post-secondary study, which we know is transformative yeah. um, for both themselves and their children and their family. Uh, so we are very proud of our KEYS program. Uh, there are thousands of, of people that take advantage of that program. Um, and again, by calling your local community college, you can find out more about the program at that school. How, how many do you, I mean, I don't know if there's an estimate, but how many people do you think are it doesn't seem like are taking advantage of the Keys program. And um, it varies um, by college, but, the, mm -hmm. but there's a good number. Yeah, um, I, and then to your point earlier, mentioning just the diversity of the student body at these community colleges, it's always neat for me to see, I got high school um, dual enrollment students mm -hmm. in the same class as some of these single parents. Um, and I always, I remember one time we had, um, school got canceled for some reason, and so my students emailed me. I said, well, just bring your kid to class with you. Mm -hmm. And it was the most adorable uh, little guy <laughs> that I've ever met. It was so well behaved. And uh, but it was just a really neat thing to see that this, this kind of opportunity is available mm -hmm. and, and built into to our community colleges. Sure, we often find that students find that their community college is their family. Mm -hmm. uh, it's their extended family. Um, and the professors at community colleges are among the most engaged you'll find. What makes them different from four-year institutions is that while many of those professors do do research and can mm -hmm. do research, they're not required to do mm -hmm. research. Um, and so they are really able to focus on their students, yeah. helping their students become engaged in their courses work, finding them in internships, and finding them job placements sure. after they leave. Sure. And a lot of them also are, um, in the adjunct world, are actually professionals in those fields that their students mm -hmm. want to go into. And I've also told my students, just take advantage of that. Ask, ask them for advice right. and career advice, because they're, they're there, they're doing what you want to do five or ten years down the line. Mm -hmm. The Pennsylvania Community Colleges are also taking a, a very active role in the opioid crisis. And this is a crisis that, I also say it's a national crisis on a local scale or it's a local crisis on a national scale where across the country everyone knows it, everyone knows something impacted by it, but it's a very local issue at the same time that impacts our families and our next door neighbors. What is the role that the community colleges in Pennsylvania are playing in, in this crisis and in, in helping to facilitate 
um, recovery or whatever it might be? Mm -hmm. Well, our approach is really two-pronged, and the first is making sure that students that may be struggling or that mm -hmm. someone in their family is struggling have access to resources, and so we're sure to provide those resources to them. And then when they are, are no longer struggling with that issue, we make sure that they have supports on the campus when they decide to pursue post-secondary study. But as importantly, we are developing programs to ensure that medical professionals are able to support individuals mm -hmm. um, who arrive in their emergency rooms yeah. or in hospitals. Um, that have unfortunately come into to conflict with an opioid. So we are developing new programs uh, for awareness and treatment, um, as well as supporting our students who, um, through various levels, are encountering the opioid crisis. That's incredible. Um, let me ask you this as we, as we kind of close out this segment. Um, you know, we, we've been talking about community in, in the truest sense of the term and the engagement that our, these colleges have in that community. What would you say to a community member, just was the earlier talk, what would you say to a student, what would you say to a community member who is looking for something to get involved in or, or considering potentially taking a class? I think there's a lot of misconceptions about the accessibility of these colleges, or do you have to enroll as a full-time student? Are lectures, um, some mm -hmm. of these school events, are these free to the public? Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone in our community about how they get involved and, and whether they should? Right. Well, I would say you should definitely check it out. Uh, community colleges are open access institutions, which means uh, you don't have to have a certain score on the SAT. You don't have to have uh, a certain GPA. Um, we are happy to educate anyone who's seeking mm -hmm. to further their knowledge through any type of education, whether it be, again, the traditional associate's mm -hmm. degree or certificate, diploma, or a non-credit program. Um, so really, we know the benefits of online learning and uh, of all learning. I'm sorry. Online learning right. has benefits, mm -hmm. too. Um, and, and so folks should just check out their local community mm -hmm. college, whether it be uh, through a formal application or whether they just want to become involved um, in one or two programs that are available to them there. That's great. Thank you so much for that. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Face the Issues. Um, Ms. Bullen, one of the things as we continue this conversation um, that is both important to you and me is taking care of our veterans and it's something across the country, across the Commonwealth that everyone is, is very much in tune with. Our community colleges are uniquely positioned to do that. Can you talk about some of that, those veterans programs and just some of the benefits for veterans coming to our colleges? Sure. Veterans do come to community colleges in great numbers. Over the past five years, over 24,000 veterans have enrolled in community colleges. And I think there are two main reasons for that. One, um, our colleges are veterans friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the, mil the official military designation of being military friendly schools. All of them have dedicated support individuals to help veterans navigate the process and their benefits ensure they're successful. Um, but more importantly, we recognize that our veterans come to us with skills mm -hmm. that they have learned uh, over their military service. And so we offer them credit for those skills and we don't make them retake courses. So we know, for example, that if you're a medic in the military, you don't need to take first aid when you come to community college. So um, in higher ed, it's called uh, credit for prior learning. Mm -hmm. And we are really proud of the way that not just for veterans, but for all students, if you come to community college and you have a set of skills, we're happy to evaluate those skills and give you credit for what you already know. We want you to spend your time and your money learning new things, right. not relearning things that you've already mastered. Right. That's a neat perspective that the learning doesn't just take place within the four walls, the confines of a classroom, mm -hmm. and that what they've learned in the military or elsewhere translates into classroom credit. Sure. Um, community colleges also accept the GI Bill. If I yes. understand correctly, right? Mm -hmm. And so for, for veterans who are looking for a place, especially if they're trying to explore what those next steps are, it becomes a, a perfect place for them to invest in and, and be able to get that guidance and education. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this as we close out. 14 colleges in Pennsylvania. I won't ask you to pick your favorite, <laughs> but what are some of the features of these colleges that really stand out to you? Um, and what makes, why do you love what you do? What, what makes you proud of these 14 colleges in our state? Uh, what makes me proud um, is our students and when I have an opportunity to meet with them and they tell me how much their community college experience has made a difference in their mm -hmm. lives. Uh, they tell me about their struggles and how their community college really stepped in for them and allowed them to achieve their goals and their dreams. We know that there's nothing more powerful uh, than an education and, and that's what makes me able to get up every morning and do my job because I know that what I do helps those students um, and our faculty, our staff, our trustees and our, and our presidents um, to really make a difference in our communities and across Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's great. Um, and I know you used to teach at a community mm -hmm. college yourself, which, which is what I do, and I, I can't uh, 
I can't agree with you more. I think just the, s the stories from our students, um, hearing our students, uh, where they come from, and then where they go to. Um, and I, uh, I, one of the things that I was just telling my classes about this this week, um, Michelle Tatosian, who's a Northampton graduate and was the Pennsylvania Community College um, Student of the Year last year. Yes. And just that background story of someone who went through seven stints of drug rehab, found herself, at, came to the community college, became the president of our honor society, and is now taking that full ride mm. to East Stroudsburg, and then studying to become a medical professional to help those who are in the same place that she was. Um, stories that are, are made by community colleges, um, and uh, to your point, it's a very unique thing that it really can't be found anywhere else. And so thank you for your time, but also thank you for the work that you do thank and you. for investing in, in this program, but also in the lives of our students. So really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, uh, that is all the time that we have tonight. Thank you so much for joining us and for tuning into this incredible conversation about not just our nation's community colleges, but specifically the 14 across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. My thanks to Elizabeth Bolden for joining us, uh, for enlightening us about the role that these colleges play, and also for the work that she does day in and day out to serve our students, and also our faculty and staff across these 14 schools in our state. Uh, continue this conversation with us online. Just remember to use the hashtag face the issues and join us again next week as we'll be unpacking another issue. Until then, my name is Sam Chan. On behalf of all of us here at Face the Issues, thank you and good night.